welcome to the one of the complex topic that is apoptosis as i told the cells will die by two types of cell death one is necrosis or the other type is the apoptosis necrosis is the far most common type of uh, cell death apoptosis occurs only in a rare phenomena so let us see the what is the uh, conditions where apoptotic figures are seen and what is the biochemical mechanism that is involved with the apoptosis so let us see the topic under the following headings definition what are the causes for uh, apoptosis what is the clinical significance of apoptosis how to identify the apoptotic bodies the morphological findings the mechanism the complex one and the clinical significance of the apoptosis the definition of apoptosis goes in a simple way it is a programmed cell death it is internally programmed cell death so it is actually cell suicide you can say it as cell suicide so the word has been derived from a greek so it means like falling off a leaf from a tree so single leaf when it comes down so it is a falling off a leaf whereas necrosis you can say it's a huge number of cells that are going to die so it's a bunch of you know the tree bunch, bunch itself is broken down that is necrosis once a leaf falls down that's apoptosis so in that way you can compare but the correct definition of apoptosis goes in this way it's a form of cell death designed to eliminate unwanted cells in the body through activated coordinated and internally programmed series of events that is affected by dedicated set of gene products so this is a wonderful definition of apoptosis it is a process where unwanted cells that want the body try to eliminate from the body so they are going to be removed by activation of coordinated internally programmed series of cascade of events affected by dedicated set of genes so there are plenty of genes that will control this apoptotic phenomena necrosis remember it's always pathological whereas apoptosis can be both physiological as well as pathological so physiological examples that occurs in every one of us is during embryogenesis starting from implantation of an embryo in the uterus embryogenesis organogenesis there also the apoptosis will take place hormone dependent involution of the uterus that's an example of the apoptosis cell deletion in a proliferating population for example cells in the skin cells in the gi tract they are continuously dividing unwanted cells are removed by apoptosis phenomena cell death by cytotoxic t lymphocytes elimination of harmful self reactive t lymphocytes that's what happens in a thymus gland the auto reactive t lymphocytes unwanted cells that are removed by a process of apoptosis if these self reactive t lymphocytes are not removed then person will suffer from a diseases called as autoimmune reactions autoimmune disorders autoimmune disorders a huge subset of a disease where self reactive t lymphocytes will not be removed by a central tolerance what we call it as by the thymus gland and these self reactive t lymphocytes will persist in the circulation and such a person will suffer from autoimmune disorders death of a host cells that served the their useful purpose they'll be removed they'll be eliminated from the body by a process of apoptosis so these are the few examples of physiological apoptosis pathological conditions like any after the severe uh, injurious process cell injury in viral diseases like viral hepatitis the hepatocytes which are infected by the viral particles they will be removed by the process of apoptosis this so the classically in viral hepatitis we see apoptotic bodies under uh, liver sections pathological atrophy in a parenchymal organs which are after the duct obstruction for example cervical gland duct if it is obstructed by stone formation so the duct asni will undergo atrophy and they'll be removed the cells will be removed by a process of apoptosis and cell death occurs in tumors by a process of apoptosis so measurement of apoptotic index itself is an a good indicator of we can predict the prognosis of the tumors how to identify the apoptotic bodies morphologically so remember apoptotic bodies always the cells will be shrunken it will be condensed so cell shrinkage will occurs chromatin will undergo condensation and it will broken down into multiple fragments so that is carrier exists so most of time the apoptotic bodies will appears more intensely eosinophilic intensely eosinophilic structures 
and the nucleus nucleus will undergo fragmentation so you'll see fragmented uh, nucleus like this but finding apoptosis is very tough under microscope because there will be no inflammation around the apoptotic bodies why because the cellular contents will not leak outside so there is no inflammation around the area of apoptotic figures so that's how the apoptotic bodies you have to search a lot if they are less in number it is very difficult to diagnose so by these morphological findings that it appears intensely eosinophilic with the condensation of the nucleus fragmentation of a nucleus you will see these uh, apoptotic bodies as single cell death so hnd is the one which can be used for identifying these uh, apoptotic figures they appears as round oval masses intensely eosinophilic structures with a dense nuclear fragments so let us see the complex mechanism which initiates the apoptosis so the biochemical mechanism is under four steps the intrinsic pathway the extrinsic pathway and the execution pathway and the phagocytosis the intrinsic pathway it's mainly mitochondrial pathway so imagine this is a cell so whenever there is an injurious stimulus for example radiation irradiation so this is a l sit the intrinsic pathway where mitochondrial enzymes are get activated so these mitochondrial enzymes mainly there is a activation and release of the mitochondrial permeability transition in the outer membrane of the mitochondria so mitochondria contains cytochrome c cytochrome c is a pro apoptotic uh, enzyme so once this cytochrome c comes outside the mitochondrial matrix it in turn is pro apoptotic so it elicits a cascade of mechanisms where bcl2 these proteins are get activated so these proteins in turn capable of activating and enzymes enzymes so called as initiator caspases these initiator caspases they are the enzymes which are nothing but cysteine aspartic aspartic acid residues so they in turn capable of activating one more enzyme so called as executional pathways so these pro apoptotic figures in turn activate important enzyme so called as endonuclease so executional pathways various caspases like caspases 8 and caspases 9 they will activate the dna endonuclease this endonuclease is they break down they break down the nucleus into multiple fragments so the nucleus will be broken down into multiple fragments this fragmented nucleus will be broken down into multiple apoptotic bodies so which contains a fragment of a nucleus contains a fragment of a mitochondria peroxisomes lysosomes so these are called as apoptotic bodies so these are called as apoptotic bodies which are recognized by phagocytic cells so apoptotic bodies will be recognized by phagocytic cells and that will be removed from the body by phagocytosis so this is the first pathway that is uh, intrinsic pathway where uh, mitochondrial uh, cytochrome c activates the the cascades the other pathway is extrinsic pathway where you know the cell will expresses variety of proteins so called as fast proteins so fast ligands will be there that will be get activated and various adapter proteins so various adapter proteins are get activated so again it initiates the initiator caspases so finally initiator caspases again activate the executional uh, pathways where endonucleases again get activated either calcium or uh, magnesium dependent endonucleases they are the one which will break down the nucleus into multiple fragments so in signaling so the transmembrane signals will be carried to the cells where it suppresses the pre existing uh, death programs and initiates the uh, death cascade the most important receptor that is get activated again is the tumor's necrosis factor that is the one which is get activated in signaling pathway in control and integration pathway there is direct transmission of death signals by a specific adapter proteins so these adapter proteins will they will execute the executional pathways and there will be a regulation of this membrane mitochondrial membrane permeability by uh, family of proteins so called as bcl uh, family of proteins mitochondrial permeability transition so what we call it is mpt so that is the one which will apoptotic trigger so through which the cytochrome c will leak outside from the mitochondrial matrix into the cytoplasm and this cytochrome c binds to the cytosolic proteins and activates them triggering the executional caspases 
So this execution cascades are the one which will initiate the further cascade of events. So BCL2 suppresses apoptosis by preventing increasing mitochondrial permeability. So there are so-called as pro-apoptotic family of proteins and there are so-called as anti-apoptotic uh, family of proteins. So BCL2 family as well as the it act as an anti-apoptotic whereas BCL9 as well as Bax and BAD they are the ones which are pro-apoptotic in their nature. So in execution of pathways the protein will broke, broke down the DNA content will broke down because of the endonucleases and finally no cellular contents will leak outside. So it's only the contents of the cell will be broken down into multiple pockets. These pockets are called as apoptotic bodies. So these apoptotic bodies will express a very peculiar type of uh, enzyme so called as paspotidyl serine. Paspotidyl serine is the one which makes the phagocytic cells to recognize these apoptotic bodies. So this expression of uh, molecules molecules so called as paspotidyl serine. So by which the phagocytic cells mainly the macrophages will identify these apoptotic bodies and it will come and engulf these apoptotic bodies. So by this way the apoptotic bodies are removed from the body. So what is the clinical significance of knowing this uh, complex mechanism of apoptosis? Remember tumors are nowadays cured not only by surgery prior to surgery or post operatively they will give chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So the intention of giving the chemotherapy and radiotherapy is to kill the tumor cells by apoptosis. So by that way you can reduce the burden of a tumor mass. So huge tumor can be reduced to the small tumor mass which can be easily accessible, easily removed from the body. So preoperative as well as sometimes even post operative they give chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Its main intention is to kill the tumor cells by inducing apoptosis. The measurement of these apoptotic bodies, how many apoptotic bodies are seen per high power field. So that index, apoptotic index itself is a good indicator of the tumor proliferation rate. So that gives indirectly the idea about the, the tumor prognosis. Is it uh, having a good prognosis or the bad prognosis? Apoptosis in tumors increases following the irradiation as well as the immune responses and measurement of apoptotic bodies in vivo as well as in vitro following a treatment it predicts the effectiveness of the treatment that you have given. So that is the importance of the apoptosis as per the medical significance is considered. So with that I end up the very complex topic that is apoptosis. Let us see the various intracellular accumulations.